Okay, I've got everything in place so that tomorrow when I'm ready, I can just start putting the bricks over top of my frame. I mentioned earlier, way back when in my video series over this, that I had an idea, it might save some money, um, or be able to reuse this kit that I purchased. So the kit I'm referencing is just simply the styrofoam mold that you know you put the bricks over top of okay so the original instructions say that once you put your bricks over top of it let it cure and then you're supposed to like tear this away because it's just styrofoam i paid 180 dollars for this simply the styrofoam mold so you can understand um, the pain it would cause me to just tear this out. So my idea is to put a barrier between the styrofoam and the fire brick so that the mortar doesn't stick to this if any bleeds through. Hi, Liam. He drives like his mom. Anyway, so my idea is uh, you're not supposed to put, well, you're not supposed to mortar on this side of the fire brick anyway. It's just supposed to be on the top, in between, and then the bottom as you're going up, okay? So no mortar should be here, but some is going to naturally leak through. So in an effort to deter it from sticking to this, um, I got parchment paper. So I tried to duct tape it, but duct tape won't even stick to it. So I'm thinking this is gonna work out. So in addition to that, I've also taken some uh, cedar shakes, which is what I'm gonna be doing the roof of this structure in once I get the chimney placement down. But anyway, I took some cedar shakes I put the thick end underneath here and then staggered them throughout. So once I'm done and it's cured, I'm going to take the cedar shakes out, which should help lower the structure a little bit, the mold, and help me break the seal. And then I'll slide this out and then those. So my goal here is just to be able to retain this so that I can use it either again or sell it or a friend, um, you know, get some use out of it. You know, just trying to be thrifty with what I've got. So anyway, I'll give you a good look around. I've got three rows of this parchment pair that overlap an inch um, in the middles, in the middle. So anyway, hoping that it'll work, but if, if not, whatever, you know. I originally only intended just to get one use out of it, but then after thinking about it, I was like, well, I'll give this a try. And I really don't intend to ever do this again. Not that it hasn't been fun, but still, I started on this project back in November, and it is August. So, <laughs> it's been a long project, and I still don't even have my smoker done to the side. But anyway, one thing at a time. So, without further ado, let's lay some bricks. All right, it's the morning after I just laid this fire brick and uh, the the mortar for the oven and it, it looks good it looks good however let me tell you i was up all night tossing and turning because i'm not happy with with that on both sides i i think it looks terrible i don't like it um it's it's not what i wanted at all so i i mean i've even I decided last night, I just woke up in the middle of the night after thinking about it, I couldn't sleep. And I was like, I'm going to tear those out and redo them. <clears throat> and I came out here and it was 4 a.m. 
don't judge me. This is really important to me. <laughs> I couldn't sleep anyway. So I came out here and the mortar had already set up beyond tearing it out. So, you know, hey, at least it's set up pretty good. So I feel good about it structurally. But I think that I'm, I'm just going to have to look to other alternatives to taking this out. One of them which is I thought about using a diamond hole saw cutter because if I, you know, took off a little bit of the edges there and then just gr I'd only grind down a little bit and then there you go. So I'm going to do something like that. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a fan, one of those, you know, I don't know, like a two by two just simple cheap fan i'm gonna put it on the other end of that so then when i get in there and i'm grinding and cutting away that fan will blow the dirt all out so at least i'm not suffocating in there um so i'll, I'll let you know how that goes but after doing some research last night i found a video by i believe it was grumpy old guy i'll put the link in the description but he did a uh, brick oven just like this, except his turned out much better. And the reason why is because he put little shims in between here and propped the bricks up so this didn't happen. If I'd known that, you know, I would have done the same. I'm not blaming, you know, anybody. It's, it's my own dumb fault and I was in a hurry and I just wanted to get it done that day. So by the time it was all said and done, then I looked back at it and I was like, oh, this looks terrible. But anyway, uh, the guy in the grumpy, grumpy old man uh, YouTube channel, he put shims all the way through to here and just rested them on his uh, stencil kit frame, whatever and then pulled them out before the mortar set up. Last night when I decided to take this off, I was gonna do the same, but then just cut like a little section and prop it up vertically rather than going all the way in. That way I wouldn't have to backfill so much mortar. So I say all this cause I mean, it's an idea for you to avoid this. So if anything, you know, learn from my mistake. So anyway, Everything else has looked really good. I'm not seeing really any major cracks or anything. This is level, so my chimney will be level. Back there looks really good. Uh, no real major cracks. Wiring looks good. I put a tarp over it so it dried a little slower and it's exactly what I wanna see. See, this is a little white and then you got your darker up top. That's what I want. I want the slow cure. So, anyway. I'm not so sure how much um, my idea of reusing this is going to work. Um, my sh my shims aren't really... Uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem like they're supporting the weight. So, I, I don't know. We'll see. I mean, they got to be doing something. So, if anything, I'll just take them out. Press this down. Um and then pull it out section by section so now that you know this didn't work as good as i think it should have that's all the more reason i have to try and save this thing so i can reuse it heaven forbid you know after a couple years i decide to build another one of these things <laughs> so anyway Hope you learned something okay. from this. Over a week now since I mortared the top oven portion of this. And I feel comfortable now to go ahead and try and remove the styrofoam mold underneath. Uh, I wanted, I, I just came out here, gave it a quick try, and it is going super easy. So I wanted to quickly grab my phone and capture this for you because I think this is really important. So all I'm doing, you can see, I just, I just... Look, I mean, just look at that. It's just coming out really easily. Um, all I'm doing is on the back, 
just right over here just with flat palms just pushing with uh, both hands on both sides evenly distributing uh, force straight and it, it just started sliding on the rails so you can see it's it's coming apart really really nicely my parchment paper is doing exactly what I wanted it to do so hot dog at least this portion of the process is turning out exactly how I wanted so here's what it looks like and now here's what it looks afterwards with minimal effort I was able to get my styrofoam mold out with with no problems at all and on this side I pulled the parchment paper down just to see how easily it could be done and no problem at all now now that I'm looking you know at the inside um, I don't know I it doesn't look too hateful you know because it's 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 still uniform it's all the same as as the oven gradually you know elevates itself so I don't know I will see if I end up cutting these little pieces away to make it you know smooth on the inside I don't know we'll see but I'll definitely be taking this mortar out with a little grinder uh, my current plan is to put some I don't know towels stuff down here to prevent dust from getting in here and filling all these cracks and stuff and uh, just make it easier clean up clean up while I have a fan over there blowing everything and I'll just grind here so at a minimal minimum I'm gonna get that mortar out like that but real quick here's here's the here's the styrofoam mold look at that brand new I mean absolutely you, you can hardly tell that it was even used unbelievable and even if you don't intend on reusing this ever again like like me removing it in this manner was so much easier than tearing it out as the instructions directed you to so how about that now, here is removing the parchment paper. I mean, look at this. It's even coming off pretty much all in one piece. I mean... And I even think this parchment paper we got from Aldi's. So, I mean, this isn't even the really thick, good stuff that you could buy wherever. I mean, super easy. looking really good just a little bit of parchment paper you know cling into the structure but you know I gotta go to work this morning so I'm not gonna be messing around with this anymore I just you know couldn't wait and had to see it anyway looking good so far okay as you can see I started grinding out the brick it's coming along really well. I'm really liking the look. I only have a little more to do, as you can see. This is my current setup. I have the fan back there, and then I climb in there and grind it out. I think it's great. I mean, what can we possibly do better? let's get to it cheers all right
we are done with that i want to make sure you guys uh you know saw before and after of me you know because uh, i'm not saying i didn't have fun doing that but uh it was terrible anyway um i will say if you make a mistake and have to grind out your oven like i just did ugh. by the good ppe yesterday i was just wearing these which i thought were were decent before i used them but um not for this purpose dust got behind them and really really messed with my sleep last night because all that dust and stuff was coming out of my eyes and it was horrible so this morning i went and bought these these are like uh liquid proof is what they're rated for and then a good n95 mask then my ear pro in there anyway now that this is done i can say i am i'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad i did it if you would have asked me when I started, I would have said differently. But anyway, um, turned out really nice. You can see I really like this smooth finish. Everything's uniform for the perfectionists out there like me. And um, I mean, yeah, you, you know, it, it gives it that good rock, earth, old, old feel, old touch to it. So I just want to show you before I cleared all this dirt away which what you're seeing is only a little bit of it because yesterday I did the majority of it and oh my goodness just tore it up rock was shooting everywhere and uh it, it was it was crazy I mean I I've got dust in a uh 20 ra foot radius all around this project so anyway back here inside there you go. Hey, I guess, let me not just scan over this. This, you're going to have this, um, unless you really pack the mortar in there. But, uh, you know, something I failed to do right there. So you have it. Not a, not a bad thing because mortar up top is completely packed in the surface. It's just, I didn't push it all the way down when I was doing those last two rows so you live and you learn so maybe hopefully you guys can avoid that mistake on yours but anyway here's mine and uh okay that's Putting it the back wall in place i went ahead and set everything as i want it to sit and then numbered it left to right dun, 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 dun. all right so i did that so i don't have to mess with cutting it and uh everything measuring while i'm mortaring uh, that's just no fun i just want to mortar and be done with it um, everything is spaced about one eighth of an inch apart that way uh, the mortar joints look decent and then i went ahead and drilled my hole here for my light um, i'm gonna run conduit from here to there when it's all said and done so i can have a, a light inside my oven and uh yeah, a little fancy, whatever, I don't care. Um, so the key to the mortar adhering to the fire brick is moisture, okay? Like I said earlier, you really want your fire brick to, I guess, cure, dry uh, this, as a slow rate as possible. That way it doesn't take out all the moisture from your mortar. So because I worked ahead and did the main oven portion here, um, I can't soak this fire brick. That's problematic. So what I'm doing is while I've been measuring and cutting this whole thing, the, the backside, I have been drenching this fire brick. Um, I don't know, every 30 minutes or so, just periodically. I've got a towel draped over the cross of it to help the fire brick retain the moisture and i really think that's going to do the trick because as you can see on the inside the fire brick the moisture water is already it's seeping through the entire brick i mean that, that's exactly what you want so with no other options at my disposal i think this is the best course of action so that's the inside it looks pretty good 
um, just to have the best fit as possible, I did cut those, um, the little relief cuts, so it's a really tight fit. I don't know, just whatever, seemed right to me. So there's that side, and then I did the same here. So, ran out of towel. I don't really care that much to go get another towel. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I'm gonna go get another towel. But anyway, there All we go. Right, I'm Let's ready to begin. I've completely saturated the brick as much as I can. There we go. And then while I was doing that, my fire brick was soaking. You can see, maybe you can look, see just a couple little bubbles coming out there. I'll probably let it just soak for just a little bit longer. Not gonna hurt it by, by any means. And then uh, just gonna get to it. And also uh, two things I don't think I mentioned, I numbered them up there so I could just put them in the water and then grab them in accordance with how they're gonna lay and then second when i cut that hole for the fire brick uh through the fire brick for the oven light that i did in there i did that before mortaring because i wanted to make sure the fire brick wasn't gonna break the last thing i wanted to do was get this all together and then you know the main focal point pretty much in that oven the light breaks has it the the brick gets a nice big old crack all down the middle so no bueno so i did that beforehand oh one more thing the instructions for for this this pad for this whatever um cooking surface originally told you to fill the cracks in with flour they took that out of the instructions and i contacted the company and i said hey what do I do? Why'd you take this out? What's the deal? They told me that long term when they put flour in there to fill the cracks, um, it eventually molds. So I was like, well, shoot, I don't know what I'm going to fill the cracks with. So I just kept on going. But when I was grinding all of this out right here, um, I got a lot of powder sand and uh from the fire brick so you can see i've got little piles of it in there so my intentions are when i'm done to just smooth that across and really just give me that seamless perfect look and finish that you want so pretty excited i mean i just stumbled across that so you know there's that and done with the back wall it went pretty good um only hitch i guess that got thrown in it was I ran out of mortar. <laughs> I just I just had to mix a little bit more, but uh, it wasn't bad. So I just I just needed just a little bit more. Anyway, came out really good. <sighs> Almost done. Back side, I still have the towels on there just because it's wet, just helping everything slow dry. And, uh, I did not wipe the back off because there's really there's no need. Um, I just made sure everything was level, um, flat, smooth, whatever, and then um, just left it as is because you're not going to be able to see any of this. Next is going to be the thermal insulation layer, my chicken wire, and then the stucco. So today I'm going to be putting the front of the oven together. You can see I've already laid everything out, got it numbered accordingly, and I'm ready to take it down, soak it, and mortar it. Before I do that, though, I wanted to square away the chimney just because I laid towels over top of it to soak this. And then... Uh, while I was up there, I cut the, the hole out of the chimney. To, to get the exact location, I just set this up here and then took a 90. And then traced it wherever, wherever I could around, okay? So that's how I did that. Um, it's not perfect. Don't care. It looks fine. So... There's that. Um, 
I decided if this is square, my flute damper is uh, canted. So I changed this, it's still gonna be on the platform as you can see. Um, it's just, this will be now square to the front, which is what I want. Now I'm using tap cons to anchor it here. I traced the outline of the base, so that'll help me know where to put my heat resistant um, flex seal, quick nail, whatever it is. But uh, before I did that, I drilled the holes. I can't get these back ones because of how close it is to the chimney or the, the roof. So what I did is I'm gonna have to use a short 90, which is what I got set up here with my masonry bit that came with the tap cons. So that's what we're doing. And the front is done. It went really well. I didn't bother, you know, facing it, getting that mortar off because, you know, you're not gonna see it. I'm gonna put uh, some insulation over top of that and uh you know then that's to go um let's see can you see that so i have some problems with the lighting um i've got that in there and just trying to push it forward and then get the pipe right and everything anyway I did all that before uh, closing this off just to make it easier. Not really sure if I can get in that little door. Probably not. Might have to send a kid if <laughs> need to change the light bulb or something. I don't know. Anyway, there's the front. I got the chimney set. I put uh, that high heat resistant adhesive on there in addition to my uh, tap cons and then I put my damper and then I got a ring and then I put some screws in there just to make sure that bad boy doesn't go anywhere a little bit of overkill but I don't know I don't care I'm glad I did it but this is a uh, two inch um, thermal insulation the instructions I've been referencing only recommended like an inch i said two whatever so there's that chimney on the top so you get the overall big picture put a spark arrestor i think that's what they call it at the very top just because i really like the look i do not expect any sparks to get down in there but uh the netting also prevents birds from getting in there so I've already been getting some bird poop under there which is great over here I actually got to you know finally put this into place I'm gonna do it everywhere but I really am seeing the benefits of anchoring this here I'm able to just get this a little bit tight which is really good and what I want because this will be my anchor point and I'll really be able to sink, uh, cinch everything down coming around. Here's the wiring problem I was talking about. So in order for me to get that in there in between the stone and that, um, I had to, you know, convince the wiring and the lighting to, to slide on in there, which was, was not easy. So I got that as best I could. And then uh, I put some of that, I put in that hole, I put my light, I ran my wires. I had some of this, I cut some of that up, shoved that in the hole. And then I put a coupling and then one inch copper pipe all the way down. So this red stuff is the same heat resistant adhesive that I had left over from the chimney. So I was like, eh, not gonna hurt anything. So I got this, I got some, uh, what are they called, flashings? I don't know, whatever these are. Um, so just to give it a nice finished look when I get the st stucco over top there, 
and then I got that here which is going to prevent water from getting in here not that I expect any to get through any of this especially way back here this area never gets wet but uh you know just still I think it, it looks good now I ran the wiring from here all the way down into here so uh, right out there so I'm gonna it's all ready for me to set up my solar when uh, I'm ready to do that but uh, I went ahead and wrapped just this base just with the thermal insulation still got to do the top not gonna be a problem at all but I'm spent so I'm calling it a day all in all went really well went really well so at this point I think it's September 10th I have a functional final step so excited to be at this point what aren't you excited too yeah all right so I went ahead and wrapped the thermal insulation all around the oven and I decided um, to leave this wire here because once I put the stucco mix over top, I will grind it to fit my door as tight as possible because it's just a, uh, what do you call it, friction fit or, you know, just, it's just a push fit. There's no anchors or anything to it. So I got my thermal insulation up. Uh, if you remember, I had two inches on maybe this on the sides and then I had some extra just uh, one inch that I put everywhere else that was kind of like secondary. Um, I should do the same trick where it was important on the top. I double insulated the one inch to equal the two inch so it's all uniform in the back. All I did is lay chicken wire all down and then just with some metal ties whatnot tied it all together and when that didn't work or you know I wanted to to do it a little better um just pinch it and fold it back down see I did that by hand not even a uh, needle nose pliers work better but anyway here's what it is so far and then you can see I've I've only got about an inch of clearance right there at the top, which is perfect. I mean, you almost would have thought I planted it like this. <laughs> I didn't. Just get lucky every now and then. Well, they say even a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then. Yep. So anyway, here we have it. To get around here, I just snipped this wire and then overlapped it underneath. And then I, I pressed it as hard down as I could just to... Uh, the purpose of this is to make sure the insulation doesn't go anywhere. So that's the why. So here you have it. Now last step is going to be to apply the stucco mix. Okay, I mixed half the that's bag good. of this Quickcrete stucco mix. The bag says surface bonding cement, but if you read the fine print, it's actually stucco. So right here you can see the consistency I mixed it to. And it was a little difficult, but uh, I think I just tried to do too much in one batch. So anyway, here's what it should look like. And now we're going to be applying it to the outside shell. And I'm done with the first finishing coat. It went really well. One of the easiest steps, I think, in building this wood-fired oven. Let me just walk you through. Like I said, this is going to be the door, and I'm going to grind, cut it out to fit exactly to my door to match the, the one underneath. To do that, I had to apply the stucco mix a little thick just to make sure that it got back into this mesh to hold it secure. So then when I cut it, it gives me a nice consistent edge all the way across covered the base of my chimney flute don't critique me too hard right now this is just the first coat if you look really close you can still see some wire popping out like right here don't sweat this I'm not all you're gonna do is before you do your next final coat just go on with some uh, metal clippers shears whatever and snip it as low as you can and then apply your final 
coat. that looks really good I think I didn't uh, have really any difficulty uh, putting this mix on really really pleased with it my washers put them up out of the way but they're gonna fit right there I'll probably silicone that or something just to make sure it's waterproof not that it really matters because no water getting in there but you know how specific I am with things. So here we go. Right here, see, you can see wires. You know, still showing through. This coat is simply to get a good uh, adhesive feel grip on the mesh. So that's why when you do apply it right here, you push it down all the way until... Uh, you know you're into that thermal insulation so i'm going to wait for this to dry and then uh, apply my final coat it's been a solid four days since i've applied the last layer of this stucco mix stucco however the heck you say it and uh i believe it's fully set up cured right now so what i'm going to do I'm going to fit the door, and then I'm going to start my uh, curing fires inside. And um, I'll talk about more of that when we get to that portion. But for the door, all I'm going to do is I'm cutting this wire out as close as I can here with some snips. And then I'm going to take my grinder and grind down until I get to the fire brick there on the inside. And done. Let's do it. it went extremely well, exactly how I wanted it to. You can see there's absolutely no cracking. It means I waited just, you know, the appropriate time for it to dry. You can see the thermal insulation intact with the, the chicken wire, you know, holding it in place right behind it. And then the stucco, stucco doing its job. Very happy with this end result. Let's just test the door, make sure it fits. And we have a perfect fit. I'm not gonna push the door in all the way because I still wanna take it out, just get in there, clean out the inside before I light my fires and everything, and just make sure that my light back there still works. And we're done. So if you're watching all the way through, this is part five of my series, uh, do it yourself, wood fired oven. And at this point I have completely finished the structural portions of the oven. I got the bottom and top done and now we can finish this portion of the series. Stay tuned because next video is gonna be just the overall end presentation of the oven it's going to show a little bit more detail of the solar that i'm going to hook up uh, the lines and then uh, how i want to control the smoke flow and then i'm going to i decided i'm going to be installing a chicken rotisserie in the bottom portion of it um, i believe my friend's talking in my ear for that one but for this i just drilled a hole all the way through yes it was very painful for me to do that after I spent all that work making it airtight <laughs> but anyway um, got my hole in there and then the rotisserie will be on the outside and it's going to be motorized and then I'm going to make this detachable uh, spool spool whatever you say reel to uh, be able to cook chickens down in there or whatever we want turkey whatever it's definitely been a long process up to this point, but with it all said and done right now, I'm just so excited I didn't cut any corners and it came out to what I wanted it to look like. Well, be safe out there and stay tuned for more videos.